So today I wanted to see what it's like being an eBay clothing and shoe reseller. So I hit up eight different charity shops and I only focused on those items. I've done okay. Um, I've learned a heck of a lot. And actually there's one find in particular I'm really excited about. I also want to run you through everything that's sold this week so far on eBay. So let's get on with it. Ian the master of pieces here. I'm a part-time eBay reseller and in this video I thought I'd challenge myself and try something new. I want to channel my inner Chaddy Pete, my inner Ricky Lee, my inner rummage around and go out today and just source clothing and shoes. That's it. Now usually I go out and source toys, board games, collectibles, that type of stuff and I'm relatively comfortable with that niche but clothing is something I've always steered away from. But I've been inspired by those guys, I've been watching their videos a lot and actually just watching them go through the rails and checking all the shoes and they've been making decent money and I thought it'd be interesting if I tried that today just with a fresh pair of eyes because I've never seriously looked at clothes and just share with you some of the tips and the bits that I've learned and actually you know what I've got tons of stuff here that needs listing anyway if I don't bring anything back it doesn't really matter if I bring a few bits back it's a bonus and actually I did okay I found some relatively nice items and actually one find in particular was just way out the box completely unexpected I have just picked it up just on the chance hoping that there might be a bit of profit in it and I will share all of that with you a bit later but first up let's check what's sold on eBay Monday now I don't know what's going on with eBay at the minute it's Monday and I sold eight things and that is brilliant because over Saturday and Sunday I only sold seven things in total so why is it Monday I'm actually getting a lot more sales in? I mean, I don't know. I haven't done anything special, but let me run you through them. First up, this is a little cheeky sale. This Grand Theft Auto 4 art book, this has gone for £10 plus postage, and it's sold within a couple of hours. Now, there are a handful of these up on eBay, and they're priced anywhere from £20 up. But I got this as part of my latest trade with Connor the Welsh Poker Picker. I've been sifting through all the bags, listing it up. I've got so much stuff here, I just want to get some that's shifted and get some money in. So I was happy for £10 plus postage for that. You know, ah, oh, awesome start. Next up, I picked these up from the boot sale. Was it last week or the week before? It's, it's no longer than two weeks ago. I always pick up Monster Jam Monster Trucks when I see them. 50 pence each the condition of these is shocking so that's why i've bundled them together superman and batman they've gone for 10 pounds plus postage so not a bad flip pound into 10 pounds right this next sale here what i did was i went out the back of the charity shop last wednesday and before they put any prices on anything i just grabbed some bits that i wanted six or seven things and we agreed just a bulk price for them i paid six pounds for a ton of stuff it worked out about a pound each and this was probably the pick of the lot. What we've got here is a pair of UK size four high top leather Converse. White with a nice kind of Converse label on there. I've cleaned them up, they were pretty filthy. There's a bit of scuffing on the back there, but they've come up pretty well, eh? They've gone for 25 pounds all in. Nice sale, love that. And also as part of that bundle, I found this Anna plush off of Frozen. She's gone for five pound 50 plus postage. Now this is a nice sale. We got Shaun the Sheep. I picked up Shaun the Sheep from the boot sale for a pound. Best thing about it, still got the tag on. And whenever I see a teddy, quite an old teddy, with a tag on, I do usually pick them up if they're cheap enough. And this one has gone for £10.50 plus postage. Next up, you would have seen it in my last video, I did pick up some Schleck dinosaurs. I paid 50 pence each. Well, I bundled these two together, mainly because they're quite low value. And this one doesn't actually stand up. You got an Allosaurus and Velociraptor and bundled together, they've gone for eight pounds plus postage. And the final sale to show you, right, is I actually popped back home to watch a football. My team, Forest Green Rovers, top of the league. But while I was back home, I popped in to see my mum. And I got my old Scalectrics out. And I've had this up in the loft for ages. I decided to get it out. We tested it, had a good play with it, but I'm going to sell it on. My kids are a bit old for it. And if they want to play with it in the future, we can always look for another second-hand deal. And I've sold some bits already. First up, I've got this old 
Well, you can see, look at that, it's absolutely battered. It's like a Williams F1 car. If you put the front on the track and test it, the, the motor does work. That's gone for £6 plus postage. I was just going to throw that in the bin. But hey, people are buying it for spares and repairs. And then what I've started to do is break down the track and put it in nice sized bundles. And I sold these two pieces of track together for £10 all in. Now, I can see there is a bit of money in Scalectric's track and accessories. As long as it works, if you can test it and, and it works, I think I will be looking out for nice sized bundles of this to split down and sell off in smaller bundles. I can see there being a bit of money there. So I'll be looking on Marketplace for, for those bundles. So today I hit the charity shops and I was only looking for clothes and shoes. I went to eight or nine different shops and you know what? I did not buy a single piece of clothing, not one. I've bought four pairs of shoes and I'm pretty pleased with how those have come out, but not a single t-shirt, jacket, coat, pair of jeans, nothing. I could not see anything in there that was worth my time buying. But you know what? It's a learning experience. It's the first time I've ever really explored that niche properly, apart from scrolling through and looking for a few football shirts. So I wasn't really expecting to bring back much, but to bring nothing back, a little bit disappointed. But you know what? I have learned a heck of a lot. So actually, I have got a few things to share with you. And the first thing that really struck home with me is actually the volume of clothing that there is out there compared to what I am usually comfortable with. You go into a charity shop and you can see like there's a corner with some toys in. Most charity shops have got rails and rails of men's clothing. So instantly you've got so much stuff to sift through. But actually going through like 80 to 85, 90% of it is just rubbish. You know, the brands are awful. You've got lots of supermarket brands, lots of budget high street brands, you know, Primarks, New Looks, BHSs, you've got all of that. Some of the pattern t-shirts that caught my eye, actually, you check the label inside, made made in like Primark. So there, there is just a lot of bulk stuff there, which is what you kind of expect. And actually, the stuff that is worth looking at, there were a lot of different labels there and I didn't know what half the brands were. So I was doing a lot of scrolling and searching through on kind of sold listings. And it doesn't take too long to realize that Blue Harbor is no good. Um, Cedarwood Valley, you know, that's no good. You start to remember these brands that aren't very good. And actually, the more and more you do it, I mean, the more and more you just won't even look at those pieces of clothing again. That comes with experience. But the clothes that are worth looking at and the brands that are worth looking at I found there were definitely some things that I still had to consider. So first up was the actual material that the piece of clothing was made out of. I found quite a nice kind of granddaddish cardigan type thing. Looked at sold listings on the brand and they were coming in at about 25 to 30 pounds per kind of cardigan. I thought, great, I found it. Check the actual label inside and it was 100% acrylic. It wasn't wool like the sold listings were. So that one wasn't any good. You then had to look at the condition of it. And actually I found a nice Hugo Boss fleece, but on the label it said sold as seen. And that just rang a few alarm bells with me. I thought, okay, what am I not seeing on this? And there were a few threads or a few bobbles here and there, but I was thinking, hang on, does the zip work? Is there rips in this or what? That was about 20 quid as well. But I could have, if it was in, if it was in good kind of condition, the sold listings would have made that worth buying. But actually the third real point was the price of entry is a lot higher than what I am used to. This type of stuff, 50 pence a pound, two pounds in the charity shop. If you buy it and get it wrong and it doesn't sell, you haven't lost much. T-shirts, I was seeing four or five pounds minimum. Jumpers are anywhere, what, eight quid, nine quid. For decent coats, 10 pound plus, you know, and a lot more actually. So you had to be really confident that what you bought was going to sell. Otherwise you could end up losing a lot of money quickly. And there was... A nice Helly Hansen coat. And actually, I kind of wish I bought it. It was in the men's section. It was size large. Um, it was like a skiing jacket. Sold listings were on about £30, somewhere like that. And it was £10. So, yeah, there was a bit of profit there. But what put me off was the colour. It was like a lilac colour. If it was more of a kind of traditional, you know, black or just, you know, not, not such a niche colour, I would have probably got it. But kind of wish I did, actually, because the solds were there. Never mind. Never mind. That That's one that maybe if it's there again, I might pick it up. Um, but the thing that really hit home, right, was 
if I've gone to eight or nine different shops and not really found anything, or maybe found that one jacket, I'd be interested to know what the other kind of clothing resellers, what their strikeout rate is. No, do you manage to find something every shop? Do you find some every five shops, every 10 shops? You know, what, what is your strikeout rate? Because for me, I didn't, I, I might have found, like I said, that Helly Hansen one jacket. But one thing that I did struggle today with is, and this is just something that applies to me, is I usually take my, my son with me, charity shopping, I have him today because he's not in nursery. So he was just really, really bored. And you know what, if you stood there flicking through clothes and flicking through jeans, there is nothing for him to look at and do. But if we're in the toy aisle and I can look through the toys and search some toys, he's obviously got something to keep him entertained. So I need to factor that at, that in when, whenever I am sourcing. You know, I've got a little person with me that I've got to keep entertained and look after. And maybe looking through clothes isn't the most stimulating for him. But anyway, I did really enjoy the clothes experience. Um, I, I will have another flick through again every time I go just to see if there is something that might pop out at me. But... I did have a lot of luck with some shoes and I prefer shoes to clothing. And I think it's just the way they're presented. The shoes are generally lined up nicely. You can see them all. You haven't got to flick through the rails to really see the labels. And shoes that look good pop out at you. You don't have to kind of go searching for them. And actually the first pair of shoes I did pick up was these here. And I, I picked them up for that reason. They were kind of on the shelf like that, angled up like that. And that gold lettering on the inside really stood out to me. Can you see that there? It says Royal Windsor by Grenson. And fair play, rummage around. He always says look out for the made in England kind of shoes. These are made in England. I did a, uh, a check, sold listings. These go for £20 plus postage, maybe a little bit more. And I paid £6 for them. So actually, yeah, not a bad pickup. But hey, actually, let's just pause a minute there. Because I want to do a quick comparison between you know, picking up something of this value compared to what I usually pick up. So the main reason why I was buying clothes and shoes today is because I was inspired by other resellers. I love watching reselling videos where you see items where the final value and the price that is sold for is a lot of money. It inspires you. It makes you want to go to the charity shops and find that type of stuff yourself. Hey, look, I get inspired by that all the time as well. But Let's just put this into a little bit of context, right? Because I'm very, very aware that the stuff that I show you might be lower value or lower end sale. The majority of things I sell on average go for about £10 plus postage. Now, me personally, I'm more inspired by stuff like this, but maybe I shouldn't be. Because if you if you actually break down the numbers, I paid £6 for these, and these might go for £20 plus postage. After all the fees and all of that, I'm making £12 profit. But if you go back to some of the items I've showed you in this video already, those Monster Jam Monster Trucks, I paid a pound. They've gone for £10 plus postage. The Shaun the Sheep, what did I pay for that? 50p or a pound? That's gone for about £10 plus postage. If you take away all the fees and everything like that, those items are making me £8 profit. So, yes, it's not such a glamorous big number that I'm showing you, but actually, I've turned £1 into £8 profit. Whereas these, I'm turning £6 into £12. So, yeah, it, it is a very different kind of business model. Buy things super, super cheap, but it's a lot less risky, isn't it? You know, I'm not, if, if those things don't sell, I'm only losing 50p or a pound. If I had five or six pairs of this, that money that I'm investing actually builds up quite quick. So, yeah, I think it's just a, a, a it's almost a little watch it to say, yeah, enjoy the big sales, enjoy the big numbers. But always think about the context behind them. What are the fees associated with it? The postage associated it with it? And also how much you've got to pay for it. But anyway, back to it. I then went into another charity shop and found another pair of shoes. And again, these ones weren't so eye-catching. These weren't kind of propped up like that. But I've sold the brand Echo before. And I looked at sold listings. And in general, sold listings on Echo shoes are pretty good. I couldn't find this exact model. But these were only £3.50. And I'm hoping to get about £20 for those. Plus postage. I then went into another charity shop. And found another couple of pairs of shoes. First step was this pair here. And these were absolutely filthy, right? This is a pair of Riker 
shoes. I'd never heard of Riker before. I had to search them and salt listings look pretty good. And actually these did catch my eye. Look, I quite like that silvery finish with the zip down there. These are probably worth 15 to 20 pounds plus postage. They're in pretty good nick. And then I found this pair of sho um, shoes here. These were absolutely filthy. So I've cleaned them up and look, they're still really worn around the edges. It's a pair of Timberlands. They're pretty old. There's, there's a bit of tread, but it's worn. You know, they're coming off the back there, but I had to pick them up. They're size nine and a half as well. Good, solid size. So yeah, that was cool. So I took them to the till and actually, you know what? I couldn't resist. In this one charity shop, I did pick up some toys. So I picked up a Thomas the Tank. I also, that's worth about five or plus postage. I picked up a wrestling figure. He's worth about five pounds plus postage. Pikachu there, he's worth about 10 pounds plus postage. We got a Kinder Egg Turtle, five pounds plus postage. And this PlayStation 2 dongle for Guitar Hero. That's worth about 10 pounds plus postage. So yeah, I couldn't help it. I, I had to. But whenever I was, I took all these items to, to the till. And then down on the floor, right, was, a, it was like a see-through plastic wrapper and it had the Helly Hansen logo on. And remember, I was thinking about picking up that jacket of Helly Hansen. It was kind of playing on my mind. I thought, Helly Hansen, actually, this brand might have a bit of value. And I opened this box, right? And the box is here. No, I got the box here. So I ended up bringing back this whole box. And in this box, let me just take some of these bits off. Check some of these shoes down here. In this box, right, are five life jackets. Helly Hansen life jacket. So, I mean, I did not expect to be going out looking for clothes and shoes today and coming home with four pairs of shoes and some life jackets. But these, that's upside down, I've got adult, I got an adult size and four children's sizes. These should go for 20 to 30 pounds each, plus postage as well. Now, I bought all the, those life jackets plus the Timberlands and those Riker shoes with those toys for 25 quid. So that was well and truly well worth my time. And actually, I kind of believe if I didn't go through and look up the sold listings on all the clothes beforehand, I wouldn't have really clocked that Helly Hansen logo. I wouldn't have looked in that box and I wouldn't have found those life jackets. So today has been a complete success and it has been totally down to these. I just hope that they sell. You know, they, I've got, I've got the, the box is quite nice anyway. So that's awesome. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that kind of little segment there. Let's run through and see what sold on eBay Tuesday. Right, so it's Tuesday and my luck on eBay has completely changed. I've had zero sales today, considering I had eight sales on Monday and actually I've had four days in a row where I've made about £100 in total. To have no sales and not even any offers, I thought that was a bit strange. And I don't usually moan about anything like this, but I thought something was going up here. And actually what happened, right, was a couple of weeks ago, I had a return case, but it was a strange one. So I sold quite a low value DVD and I used my full three days dispatch time. So I posted it like the afternoon of the third day. Now, the next morning, I had a return request from the buyer saying that they'd received the DVDs and they were faulty. They, they didn't work. So they wanted a full refund. Now I know I've been doing this long enough to know if I post summit on an afternoon, it is not getting there in the morning, second class, no chance whatsoever. This guy, right? Absolute chancer. So I messaged him and I didn't even look at the like proof of postage. And I said, mate, your DVDs haven't even been delivered to you yet. How can you say you want to return them? Cause they're faulty. And then I had a message come back saying, oh, sorry, I was kind of meant to open the return on another item. Yeah, right, mate. And then I had another message said, oh, actually, the DVDs have arrived. This was the day after. DVDs arrived and, and uh, they work fine. Thing is, though, he never closed his return case. And I've asked him a few times to do it. So anyway, Tuesday was the day when that return had to reach me for, to then make it all valid and for me to refund in. Obviously, I've not I've not received the return. Has that knocked on to my sales today? I don't know. For me, it's too much of a coincidence coming off the back of four really strong sales days. And you know, you know the stuff I sell. I've got a whole mixture of stuff, different price ranges, different items. 
surely someone out there is going to take interest in one of my items, at least to make an offer and to have nothing. Yeah, I think there's summer going on there. So let's see if it picks up Wednesday. So it's Wednesday, and lo and behold, eBay have cancelled that return request um, because I obviously haven't received it and sales have started trickling through. So I've sold a ton of scale electrics track again. I sold this Jimbo here and I that went for eight pounds plus postage and I got this as part of that big bundle that I agreed with the charity shop for six quid. And I sold a pair of football boots actually, but the guy messaged me after he paid and said that if I can't get them to him by Saturday for his match, he doesn't actually want them. So there's no way that I can do that with the time scale. So cancelled it, refunded him. Anyway, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I, it's been quite a fun one. I did really enjoy going to those yeah, clothes shops and finding those life jackets. That is random, eh? But hey, guys, if you enjoyed it, hit that like, hit that subscribe, and I'll catch up with you in the next one. See you guys. Bye-bye.